You're listening to Support Creative Souls Podcast, highlighting and supporting inspiring creatives, plus a few shoe stories to help kick up your innovative journey. Hosted by me, Stephanie V. Welcome everybody back to Support Creative Souls. We have an amazing show for you today and a super, super amazing guest. I'm so excited to introduce her. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce you. This is Lydia Ferrufino. You got it. Right? Yeah. I was so nervous about saying her last name. It's, um, it's a tough one, but um, I did it. Um, so. Thank you, Lydia, for coming Thank today. Thank you for having me. And um, I just want to start out, but tell us a little bit about yourself, how you can just be described as a creative soul, and how we can support you. Oh, thank you. I, I do. I think I get the creativity from my mama. No, um, you get it from my mom. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I am somebody that cannot sit still. My mind is always going, so I have different outlets where I let that go. Um, one of them being Living Latina Live, which you graced us yeah. on. Yeah, if you haven't seen that episode, go back. Yeah, it's on. Watch all her episodes, <laughs> <laughs> but that one was the best. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was a really good one. I yeah. really, I really appreciated that one because it was, you know, going back to the youth. Mm -hmm. But Living Latina is pretty much it's a, um, a social media live talk show. And then I also have House of Alice Rose, which I am partnered up with Izzy, who. Um, is a fashionista extraordinaire and that one really it's a lifestyle and fashion blog and mm -hmm. we cater to um, the you know the woman now uh, where we talk about empowerment fashion beauty yes. pretty much anything that we're going on that, that's going on in our lives at that moment right we bring light to it and we go from there and then I also do interior design which a lot of people oh, don't know so that's what I didn't know yeah. about well I think you might have told us on the show a little bit but yeah. you don't you don't you know put that on social media and stuff so because I'm and you know nowadays if it's not on social media <laughs> it then that person count. don't really do it. okay <laughs> no the thing about the interior design is that I'm actually kind of like the back end mm -hmm. and um, of one of my really dear friends Karen okay. um, so it's design with your diamond mind and I do her social media her marketing um, I do all of that but I'm also her right-hand man when it comes to bigger projects or whenever there's a lot of like online behind-the-scenes stuff that you don't see when it goes into buying and building a home from the ground up as far as the decor goes so I wow. do that as well and so I love that that's like a lot of different things that you kind of tap into which yeah. is what's gonna be my next question is why, you know, why did you want to start the show and, you know, why is it so important for you to, as a mother mm -hmm. and a wife, to jump into following your dreams and, and pursue these different creativity? That's a good question. Um, when I started the show, I didn't think too much about where I was going to go. Yeah. I just kept thinking the Facebook Live trend was like so big. Yeah, it still is. It really <laughs> is. And um, I actually got into the whole Facebook Live thing through a beauty group. I was okay. part of this group called Glamour Girls, mm -hmm. or I'm sorry, Glamour Empires. Glamour Empire, something like that. I'm sorry, it's been a couple of years. <laughs> yeah. Um, but they would pretty much um, kind of encourage you to go live, do like share your makeup, makeup routine, yeah. your skin routine, and people would go live. And I remember um, watching one of the admins and she had like thousands of views and I'm like, geez, what? What she has such a yeah. reach. So of course, at that time, I did um, the blog with Izzy, and I'm like, how can I help? How can I help? But I couldn't tie that together. Mm -hmm. And what I kept thinking was, I don't see people going live that look like me. Right. I don't see people going live that want to talk about things that I want to hear, right. or want to talk about things that are important to me. Mm -hmm. I don't see moms out there with their kids. So I started um, kind of creating a concept in my mind about living Latina, and I was like, I want to not only have a voice, but I want to give other people a voice too. I love and that. I remember thinking like, I have such a good connection with a lot of my friends that are, they're all doing something. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, my friend Karen, who's an interior design, yeah. and Izzy, she's a super fashionista. I, at that moment, I had a couple of the girls in mind that I wanted to kind of come in. My idea was to have rotating guest co-hosts. Uh -huh. 
um, initially. And then I was like, what if we start with this force? So that's how I started Living Latino. It was originally four of us. Um, two of the girls um, got really, really busy with their projects, so they decided to step down. It's hard. It's yeah. hard to, I know, like, I was actually, before this podcast, I had another friend that was, he was in Miami. So we were doing it, like, as he was in Miami, and then we'd get on the phone, record it. But you start to realize, like, everybody's so super busy, yeah. and it's not that it can't work, but that everybody has Absolutely. just a life outside of you wanting to create something fabulous. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so... But it, it was perfect though because I just felt like they were growing so rapidly, both right. of them, that I was like, there was the right thing to do. Right. So Izzy, you know, moved out of state and that left me and she was such a huge reason why I continued because I could have just said, okay, it's done. Right. It was fun while it happened. Right. But she was like, go for it. This was your idea. This was your creation. And I just went for it and I was able to work on my self-confidence a little mm -hmm. bit because it's always easier sitting next to someone and vibing with them versus just it being you. Exactly. So that's how it was. I just want Living Latina to be a voice, um, to be a place where we can all come together, have some girl chat, empower each other, promote like, you know, how I, how, how I can promote you as a woman, you as a fellow Latina. And let me just say, Living Latina is not just for Latinas. It's how I'm living my life as a Latina. Come join me. Come, Come join me. the show. Yeah. Which I think is great because right now it's, we're in the movement of women in power and mm -hmm. the Make Too movement and like just other women helping other women. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I have a friend that just had a book come out and, you know, so it's just like continuously supporting yeah. and building us and it's, there aren't a lot of platforms for us to do that. So I, when I first saw the show, I was mm -hmm. like, that's a great idea. Thank you. Because also we're in Houston and Houston needs these type of things because you don't see enough millennials and people doing things in the city um, with these faces. Okay. <laughs> We're beautiful. Okay. Brown and proud. <laughs> Brown and proud. Okay. Hashtag. And so, um, you know, when I first saw the show, I was like, that's a great idea. I love it. And um, at the time I was still doing On the Mic with Stephanie B. We switched over. But um, I. I know Connie was doing it too, so the Houston Latina bloggers, mm -hmm. they're such a great force of women as well. So kudos to you for continuing you. it and for, you know, doing it independently and keeping it going. And so let's move right along then. Um, so this show kind of was talking about, you know, I have it written here, following your dreams but also balancing your life because as you might know, I recently became engaged. I know. Like, 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 I, I have been dying to say this, but <laughs> let me see the ring. <laughs> you, oh, I cut myself with a knife today, so oh, this, yeah. minus this finger, it doesn't matter. Oh no. my gosh, he did so good. He did really good. That's beautiful. So thank no, you. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> so now, you know, not only. You know, my all my dreams, everything that I've been doing is coming first, but now I'm planning a wedding. Yeah. And I know for you, it's like, you know, you have your children, yeah. you have your husband, you have your, you know, uh, or, you have a child. <laughs> oh, okay. She has a child. Oh, no. I, I said, I, I, I know I said children, but I'm, I was thinking for all mothers. I mean, you have your children, yeah. you have your husband, you have your day-to-day -day life. So, you know, and I know for my sister, she just went back to work and she has four kids. And so it's, it's, it's hard for a woman to know how to balance get that balance. And so how are some of the ways that you do that, you know, with pursuing your dreams and things that you're passionate about? I think I I have to kind of check myself because when I first had the baby, I battled with postpartum depression like mm -hmm. really bad to where I didn't leave my house for months. Like yeah. for months I didn't leave and I was like this is what I wanted. This is this is what God sent for me. So now you almost like you're stuck. Like right. this is your life. Mm -hmm. And I told myself this was it like you had a child and you pray for him because unfortunately I suffered with um, infertility issues mm -hmm. for about five years before I conceived him so once I got him and once I he was in my life I just felt like this is what you want it this is all you can do now. Yeah. and I had to kind of check myself and say no like yeah. I, I would get bored like I told you I'm someone that's very creative so I check myself and say hey if you can send him to preschool, for example, which is something I recently did, mm -hmm. and you can have two, three hours to just dedicate to your mind being occupied on something that you love, it's okay. Right. Like, I had to push that guilt yeah. back. I up. think for a lot of mothers, and um, you know, even like my sister, it's just, just continuously, I don't have kids, but I have nieces and nephews, and 
you know, I grew up, I, all my friends have kids, so I know it's just that feeling of like, you yeah. know, give and take, give and take. Is this more important? Is that more important? Do you feel that guilt because you're working mm -hmm. on things that you're passionate about? But I also think that there's now a huge support network and group of women that are mm -hmm. doing more and, and, you know, including their kids and following their dreams with the different blogs and, Absolutely. you know, talking about their kids to help other mothers, you know, do that as well and feel like it's okay. It's okay. It's yeah. okay. Yeah. A huge part of it was definitely like my husband. I'm very blessed to have a very supportive husband. So he was someone that was like, you're not meant to sit around. Like you're not meant to just be a mom. Right. He's like, I married a woman that wanted it all. Right. I married a woman that he says, I don't think I deserve that credit, but that pushed him out to do what he's doing now and that supported him. So he's like, you have to keep going. And that's when I started to go back to work slightly, kind of part-time with um, Design With Your Diamond Mind. Mm -hmm. So I'm doing the interior design now. It's like, okay, it's okay to be away three hours and then come right back. Right. That's how I kind of wean myself Just away from you that, giving you that little space yeah. of like finding yourself again. Absolutely, and once I felt that, and once I tasted that, mm -hmm. you can be a working mom, you can be a creative, you can do this, you can do that, and your child is still alive when okay. you get home, <laughs> That's how I did it. Yeah. I just was able to do that. And now it's a lot of to-do list and balancing. Right. You just, I work myself out as the day goes. <clears throat> Today this has to happen, tomorrow this will happen. And I have to pencil everything in. And I think that's, that's great tips for mothers that are trying to do it all. I mean, as women, we are made to do it all. <laughs> and, um, you know, sometimes, you know, the lists help. And also just give, you know, different I know a friend of mine, she read a lot of books to help her figure out her way to figure out, again, what you kind of lose what you're passionate about. And um, so I think those are some great tips just to help, you know, women understand that you can absolutely do what you want to do and pursue your dreams outside of your family. Now for me, it's going to be, you know, kind of like, <laughs> I don't know, but we'll see. That is a great tip. So talking, speaking about family. Um, and I know a lot about this because I have a business with my family mm -hmm. and I know that you've been helping your mom with her earring company. So tell us a little bit more about that. And, and I actually wore her earrings, Cositas de, Cositas de Maya, de Maya um, on my last show. So if you saw that one, they were the red. Dang, I should have worn them again for this show. But I am killing myself because I had them separated. She uh -huh. made some for me and I didn't wear them. I completely oh, forgot. Girl, I forgot. I forgot. I'm so sorry. <laughs> anyway, tell us how it is. Why you know? And, and speaking of, she's um, a mother who's decided to start a business at this time, and you know, so I'm sure that was like new to her yeah. and, and exciting. Definitely exciting. And she she was a nervous wreck to be honest with you. And I have to just real quickly sneak this in. Today is her birthday. Oh. Yes. Yeah, so today, as we film, she is turning 60 years old. Oh. See? Yes. So that just goes to show to so all the older women who are watching this show that it's never too late Absolutely. to create and follow and pursue your passion. And I tell this to my mom all the time. I tell this to my sister all the time mm -hmm. because it's just like if you have something in your heart that you need and feel like you want to yeah. do, I, I just feel like, you know, I have, to, I have always I'm telling this to my mom because she's like, oh, I don't know, I don't know. We're doing it. Nope. We're doing it. Yeah. We're doing it. Let we're it out. It. We're doing it. Yeah. So, that's awesome. So she's always been a very creative person. She's always been a mom that kind of like makes us cositas, like, oh, mira lo que hice, like mm -hmm. this and that. And I started to notice like she kind of went with the trends. Like she, you remember when like those big scarves were like mm -hmm. a thing where it was almost like draping you? Yeah. So she would make them and knit them for us. She's made beanies for my brother. She made a blanket <laughs> for my son when he was born. Yeah. She's always done something. Mm -hmm. She made a beautiful apron for Izzy from House of Alice Rose mm -hmm. when she started to go to culinary school. So then I was like, Mom, why don't you kind of, you know, continue to do things and let me post them to see if anybody's interesting. I would buy it. Yeah. And she's like, no, nadie me va a gustar. Nobody's going to like it. So she, <laughs> had this, yeah. she had this insecurity of like, you like it because you're my daughter. Nobody's going to want to pay money for it. So I said, let me try. Let me try. Right. I created an Instagram for her and I created a Facebook for her. And you can find her under Cositas de Maye because her name is Mayela, but it's short for Mayela Maye. So I started posting um, tassel earrings, which is like the thing she's into right now. Yeah. 
and uh, I'm like, Mom, you have an order for two, and you have an order for three, and this and that. And before you know it, I mean, she's selling. I mean, yeah. she's not. I told her, don't expect to be a millionaire, <laughs> but you know, you can have some like fun money. Yeah, you know? and that's that's what I told my mom. She wants to retire soon, and you know, she's looking for something to do on the side. So we, that's originally why I started this to, to bottle the salsa was to give her like a little avenue of like once you retire, you know, you can sell the salsa and yeah. create, you know, do the cooking show, things like that. But mm -hmm. you know, they, they try to limit themselves as yes. much as possible. And they don't, it's also about having the confidence. So mm -hmm. it's kind of crazy how, you know, like a mother's supposed to give a child confidence and now it's kind of flipped where the child is giving the mother yeah. confidence. And I'm, I feel like I'm doing that to her all the time. Like, yeah. no, it looks good. No, and like we do photo shoots and stuff. And it's just kind of funny how it's like, oh, it looks good. It looks yeah, good. I had to beg her. I don't know if you noticed that for, I think it was a couple of days ago for the National Lipstick Day. Uh -huh. I had to beg her, <laughs> beg her to take that photo. If you go on her Instagram and her Facebook, there's a photo of her. There's no photos of her right, on her stuff. It's a photo of her and I like styled her and I put on the boldest. I have to go back and see it. I don't know. I, I, I follow her on Instagram. So yeah. I have to go back and it see it. It was a couple of days ago for okay. National Lipstick Day. And I was like, you know, don't, no, no, don't show me. You put your face. I'm like, it's not my brand. It's not your brand. I'm not the creator. This and, is and that may even be more sales because if people see that it's like, you know, not this, this young hipster girl making earrings, yeah. that this is really a mother who's selling and is passionate about it. And abuelita too. And that's great. Right. <laughs> and that's a good story. Yeah. So, well, cool. If you want to go purchase her earrings, go to Cositas de Maya, and you can find her on Facebook and Instagram. We're working to see if we're going to add her in any of the other avenues like Shopify and Etsy. Yeah. But as of right now, it's, it's little, working for her. Just so, on Instagram. I mean, it's. I think it's been maybe a month since she started. So, um, she so sales. far, so she good. <laughs> so, as a fashionista, mm -hmm. and you know, you are part of the blog, mm -hmm. and you know, how does fashion take in your everyday expressions like you know in your creativity like how does what do you wake up when you pick out an outfit do you start with i always ask this question do you start with the shoes and then go up or do you go with the outfit and the shoes it honestly depends on my mood because <laughs> I, if i'm feeling like your typical everyday lydia yeah i <laughs> am like give me the flats give me the You're jeans right. i am a graphic tease kind of girl okay so you can tell what i'm feeling Depending on what my graphic teeth tell okay. okay. You can tell so, the, yeah. who's which, coming out Which today. one's coming out? <laughs> Sasha so, Fierce? <laughs> or Patty Betty? Or Patty Betty. <laughs> no, but I think it really depends on um, what I'm feeling. I usually work around um, from the top down. Okay. So what I want to do to my hair. If I'm feeling lazy, then this is going to be very chill. Very if I'm cool. feeling fabulous, then I, you know, I want my hair big. I want yeah, lace. I want, you cool. know. Yeah. It, it depends when you work with like, September 30th is coming out. So you're a Scorpio? I'm a Libra. Everybody says I'm a Scorpio. I'm a Libra. September 30th. You're like cusp Libra, maybe Scorpio, no? Yeah. My, no, my brother's a Scorpio and he's November. Yeah. So yeah, I'm a Libra, but mm. I work, I guess I work from the top down. Okay. What this feels will reflect. Will like yeah. Like so who are some of your style mentors or like icons? I guess, you know, who do you look at and say? Icons? Mm. I see Salma Hayek and I just think perfection. Perfect. Though. Perfection. Right. You can see her on her Instagram with no makeup. Yeah. And she is so sexy to me. I and like when she too. opens her mouth, she's so smart. Yeah. That is such a thing for me. So Salma Hayek. I love Penelope Cruz, but I like Penelope Cruz to look at. Mm -hmm. I don't think I would fit into that style. Yeah. I think it's just some a beautiful canvas. She's not a, she's not as glamorous as like some Hayek. Yeah. She's but plain she's plain but beautiful plain. Yeah, no, she's she's, oh, she's So you know this is support creative souls and we love to talk about shoes and I showed my shoe last time so I'll show I'm wearing some little Girl, you know, those are heels. Tall. Yeah, I'm five two, so I gotta give myself a little bit of, you know heel at all the time. A little but, cushion. So we'd love it if you could um, show us your little shoe because you got a fabulous little studded shoe on. Go ahead and pick your little foot up there. <laughs> Take it off if you want. We got it. <laughs> Isn't this fabulous? Studded, all studs. Yay. I love it. I had it. to bring it. I'm like, you're going to be around Stephanie. You know you got to put on that bold lip and a good Put on that lip and put on that shoe. <laughs> So what is your everyday shoe? I know you're, you know, with the hustle and bustle, you're always yeah. going, do you always, do you, I know you said it's to whatever you feel like in the morning, mm -hmm. but is there like always, like, what is your go-to shoe? So we were joking before I came on camera that I was like, let me put on my camera shoes because the ones I was wearing were not <laughs> camera ready. 
I am a sneaker girl. Ah, yes. I love sneakers. High tops are my so favorite. So like Nike Dunks or? Yeah, you know, I'm a little bougie when it comes to the sneakers because growing up, I grew up very, very, I don't want to say broke. It was beyond broke. We were like poverty line. So there was a lot of things that growing up I knew I liked and the fashion was a big one, but of course I couldn't even afford to say yeah. some of the name brands. So I'm bougie when it comes to my sneakers. Yeah. Like I love <laughs> Louis Vuitton sneakers. Ooh. I love me those like retro Chanel's. Yeah. But then I also love the Yeezys. They're just so yeah. comfortable. So when it comes to my sneakers, I'm very bougie. I, I was just, telling the last time, like I, I model for, she modeled for kids for a long time and like growing up we couldn't afford kids. So <laughs> I was like putting the blue sticker on the back, getting the blue, you know, sharp. Yeah. <laughs> yes, girl. From the kid sign in the Been back. <laughs> my sister was like, we had kids all the time. I said, no, we didn't. You're like, I didn't. Them. <laughs> yeah. So we always t we always talk to the youth, and you know, uh, follow my feet is speaking to the youth and following their passion. Yeah. So, what would you tell somebody, you know, about someone in the youth about where they are? I guess the question is, let me just read the question because I'm like fumbling over. What would you tell a young creative who is currently where you are five years ago? Five years ago, five years, I was str uh, very very. I've always struggled with. Um, self-esteem issues mm -hmm. and insecurity issues. Um, I never felt quite adequate because like I said before, we grew up very, very poor. So I didn't look mm -hmm. like my peers. Right. Um, I am um, the daughter of immigrants mm -hmm. and I am an immigrant myself. So five years ago, I actually became a US resident. And that did such a thing for me yeah. because I finally felt like I belong here. Like you gave me I, shoes. I can come out now. I, I can right. come out of hiding. So me five years ago discovered that it was in me the whole time. Yeah. I just had to let it out. Mm -hmm. So if you have insecurities, whether it's physical, whether it's mental, whether it's something that's holding you back socially, like you know, immigration issues or right. whatever the issue may be, dig deep inside. It's in there. Because if it wasn't, you wouldn't be thinking about it. Right. If you're thinking of creating something or if you're thinking of starting something, there, it, your thought is in there for a reason. Mm -hmm. I, am, I am a spiritual person, so if God wanted you to think about it, it's it gonna is. be in your mind. So come out and push. And if you don't find it in you to do it, reach out to somebody that will. For example, I'm, I'm sure if you reach out to Stephanie, if you reach out to myself, and if you want a little push, if you want some guidance, if you want just a question answer, reach out to somebody because most of the time when you reach out, you, you find that people around you want to help you. Yeah, they want to push you. I, I say that that's one of my key points is to to ask and you shall receive. Yes. But if you don't ask, and you, you never know what possibility and what help you Absolutely. potentially get. So. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. I know you said you brought me a little something. I, I was going to so. say, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> I always wait, love wait, wait. gifts, you know. <laughs> Yeah, so I noticed that you get some cute little um, accessories for your show, and she is all about the shoes. So when I saw this, I immediately thought, "Hmm, you guys, I know so those tears." So yeah, so this is for and it's for cute. cute. So this will like be so on the show every time because it is <laughs> all about the shoes. It's all about my feet. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I know you do the follow my feet yeah. movement, so I'm like, this is perfect. Thank you so much. You're my so first, welcome. my first gift on oh. the show. So thanks again for joining us. Thank you for the special gift. If you want to do your little plug to tell everybody where to meet, follow you at, follow the show. Go ahead. So um, Living Latina Live is the handle for my show, for the social media live. It's live. It's a live talk show and it, anything goes. So it's <laughs> at Living Latina Live and you can find me on Facebook and on Instagram using that. And if you're more of a fashionista, more of a lifestyle blogger kind of girl, you can go to houseofalicerose.com. And on Instagram, we're at, at house underscore Alice Rose. It couldn't fit, so yeah. <laughs> houseofalicerose.com will probably be easier and you can kind of window your way down there. But other than that, if you're looking for an interior designer, uh, my boss mm -hmm. is at Design With Your Diamond. She does Line. it all. Yes. <laughs> But thank you so much. Stephanie. Thank you so much. Thanks so much for being on the show, and thank you for joining us. You can find me at in, on Instagram at Support Creative Souls, and we now have our Facebook up. Yay! So you can watch these videos on Creative on bleh, Support Creative Souls on Facebook, and uh, of course we're on iTunes and we are on iHeartRadio. Thanks again for joining us, and remember to follow my feet.
That's a vibe. That's all for Support Creative Souls Podcast. I hope you enjoyed. Stay tuned for next time and make sure and follow us on social media at Support Creative Souls.